Welcome back. So this time around I'm out on the ramp and doing some different tests here with different uh, boost levels set by adjusting uh, the wastegate springs on the turbos. Alright, so um, this is the runs that I did uh, yesterday. I wanted to go through this and you know hopefully this doesn't get too boring. But uh, I wanted to show you what happened here when I was adjusting the boost settings on the various on the two different turbos. So I did three different setups. Uh, the first one here is I've pretty much disabled um, or just opened the wastegate completely on the uh, first turbo. So looking down here, the, the green line here, that's the um, PSI there for uh, the first turbo. And obviously ambient is about 14.7. So, uh, and then the next run what I did was I've uh, re-enabled that wastegate again, but I've gone and changed the springs in the second wastegate and uh, made it so it can't boost quite so high. And then the third run over here where I did like four different runs, um, I've gone and basically put another or switch, switched out to the springs because there's three springs in that wastegate um, controller, in the boost controller. And, you know, depending on which springs you have in there, and what pressure that they supply, you're adjusting when the wastegate opens in terms of how much boost you get. So anyway, let's go through um, the first one here and I'll just show you kind of what I ended up achieving with that uh, done. So this is basically with the first turbo with the wastegate completely open, so it's generally not gonna generate any boost at all. And the second turbo, I had this one of the springs removed, one of the heavier springs removed, so it would only generate uh, less boost than, than it's been previously. So if you look here, you can see um, when I ran it to full power, now I haven't adjusted the fuel, which is kind of like a bit of a problem really because less boost means less air and the same amount of fuel means everything's gonna run richer. Um, but basically here on, this, on the uh, output here, I've sort of narrowed down the data. So we're looking at the fuel mass at the top here. So basically zero to 90 milligrams is 90 is, is the maximum throttle that I have set. Um, you know, that's the amount of fuel at 100% throttle. And then um, the next thing down here is the engine RPM. So the, the prop is set right now with the current power settings I've been running. The prop is set to generally get to about 3,700 um, and a little bit more RPM at full power. And let me just clarify that. So the reduction ratio on the redrive is 158 to one. So if the engine is at uh, around about 3,800 RPM, the prop is at 2,400 RPM. And then I've got the temperatures in here. So this is uh, what the output of the turbo is, the second turbo is doing. And then uh, what the intercool is doing is the lower one in yellow. Uh, so, you know, how much that intercooler is basically cooling everything off. And then down here, your boosts on both um, turbos or the, the total pressure on both turbos. And at the bottom here is the lambda. And of course, we want to go for a lambda of one. Anything lower than one means we're basically blowing smoke. Um, we're running too rich. So if you can see there, um, when I did the first run there, took it to full power, so 90 milligrams of fuel, I was only able to get to 3,425 RPM there, roundabouts. Um, so I'm not not pushing as much power as I had before because I just can't get it to go to 3,700 RPM. Uh, obviously, the temperatures are going to be lower than I had before, so the peak temperature there uh, coming out of the second turbo was 230 degrees uh, before I backed off. And uh, the intercooler is you know, doing a reasonable job there knocking off 100 degrees, around about 100 degrees there, 95 degrees. Um, and then the boost, uh, obviously there on the first turbo, the green one wasn't really getting any boost at all, pretty much, you know, zero boost because uh, it was just, you know, just above ambient. And the second turbo with the reduced um, uh, springs in there, the wastegate was opening earlier, so the, the maximum PSI in there was 28. And because I haven't adjusted the fuel there, the lambda is really rich, so running um, 0.75 there, so I'm basically blowing a lot of smoke. So... That's not ideal. I'm not getting the power that I want. Um, I'm running too rich. And yeah, I mean, the upside is, yeah, I've lowered the temperatures there. Because, you know, ultimately what I'm trying to do here is figure out if I can lower the temperature going into that intercooler and still get the same amount of power. And um, that's really what the goal of this test was to be. And also this test was just to see whether or not I'm 
anything's weird going on. In other words, if I step up the boost slowly, does everything look uniform in terms of how everything's going just to make sure that there's not something weird going on where I'm generating too much boost and I'm not getting anything for it other than heat. So that's the first run. So that was really, um, didn't really give me what I needed. So the second run there kept the same springs in the second um, turbo, but then basically activated the wastegate um, for the second one. So it would be shut and get some boost. So if we just look at this one again, the same fuel, uh, 90 milligrams of fuel there. I got higher RPM this time, 3592 as it expects. So I'm getting closer to 3700, but not quite there yet. Um, temperatures a little bit higher, 240 this time. Last time over there it was 2, 228. And the boost obviously went up there. So the, the pressure on the second, uh, coming out of the second turbo was 31.9 um, was the maximum. And that's because, you know, the first turbo was helping um, boost the whole setup there because the first turbo was getting to 22.6. And the Lambda is better there, point. 0.83, um, but it's still, you know, way below the one that I want, so not ideal. And then the second run here was just basically just to try it again, just to see if things were improved. And I think I adjusted the timing on here, but it didn't really make a difference. And so then the next one, I went back and I just changed the springs out there. So I've put in um, the two heavier springs and left the light, lighter one out, so I'm going to get more boost. Um, and if we just look at this first run here. So 90 milligrams of fuel again. This time I got to 3655 RPM. So getting closer to the 3700, but not quite there yet. Um, and then the uh, temperatures are going up. So now we're 284. So we're getting close to what we were getting, you know, the other day with with all three springs in there. So you know, temperatures basically starting to converge on, on what I already had. Um, and then the boost here, 36.9 PSI on that circuit turbo. And then the other day, the way I had it configured, I was getting sort of 39.40. And you see the Lambda still 0.909, so still uh, running rich there. And then these other runs here, what I did was I've basically gone and just advanced the injection timing. And, I mean, potentially it's making a slight difference. So these were all just like advanced at like three degrees here and then two degrees, and then another two degrees, so I'm at like 27 degrees here, round about. And you see, you know, the difference between this run and this run is just very minimal, if anything. Um, the RPM might have been slightly better. So I've got 3,700 RPM here, whereas, you know, back here I'm getting 36.67 and then 36.75, 36.76, the and then all of a sudden, you know, I get 37.03 here. So... I think the advanced timing gets me a little bit more power, a little bit more RPM, um, and it probably doesn't cost me anything in temperatures and stuff because the temperature is about the same, so 285 there. And then, you know, back here I'm, you know, 284, so it's pretty much the same. So potentially uh, increasing the timing a little bit buys me a few more RPM, um, but really everything else pretty much stays the same. So I'll leave the timing advanced the way it is uh, right now. So, but given that I still have a lambda down in here of 0.907 running rich, I'm not happy with that because it just means um, that I need to take fuel out. And if I take fuel out, I'm going to lose power. So if I go back to, uh, you know, one of the previous runs here, like the, run, the run I did down the runway there the other day, um, and we look at that one. So you can see in here that you know, once you get moving down the runway, the RPMs can come up a little bit because you're not sort of sitting, sitting static anymore. So, you know, the, then you actually end up sort of hitting the governor a little bit. But here you can see that even on this run here, a Lambda was 0.94 down the bottom there. So that's still running rich there. And this is with that adjustment that I made to that um, wastegate controller where I changed out the um, connection there that uh, helps hold it closed a little bit longer. In other words, increase the boost. So the boost here is running at 39.8 rather than the 43 that I normally sort of get. So ultimately, if I really want to run with this setting with this reduced boost to you know keep this temperature down a little bit here, because that's basically bringing that temperature down, the temperature going into the um, into the intercooler. 
it's basically dropping at maybe 10 degrees or something by knocking off that three um, pounds of boost um, that's on there, or three or four pounds of boost. Um, but it's at the expense of running richer with this lambda, so I'm basically blowing smoke, blowing black smoke, and so I'd have to reduce the fuel again here. Um, and if I reduce the fuel, I'm going to reduce my power overall. So I think really what it comes down to, and if, if we go and look back at the first flight, and let me just interrupt myself again here just quickly. Uh, I just wanted to explain that squiggliness on that yellow line there is because that sensor is going into an aluminum pipe there that has the rubber connectors on either end, and it doesn't have a proper ground on it. So every now and then it, it jumps around. So that's something that I've been looking to actually fix just by putting a ground wire uh, to that particular pipe here. Um, you can see on this one here, yeah, the temperature went above 305, so that's where this thing stops, that sensor stops reporting after 305. But you've kind of got to extrapolate where it went. Um, and normally it levels out fairly flat, and I'm kind of, you know, just guesstimating every time that it goes to maybe 315 or maybe 320 or something like that. Um, but ultimately you can see here, at the peak there, I had 43 PSI um, was the pressure coming out of the second turbo there. But the Lambda, you see 0.99, I mean, it's running really well there. It's pretty much running with a Lambda of one most of the time. So I'm getting the peak efficiency um, out of the engine at this point. So I think what I'm going to do, uh, I know, I'd, you know, my goal is to try and lower these temperatures here, lower this orange line. So I'm not blasting hot air into the radiator. Um, but at the same time, I want to keep the engine running um, as uh, efficiently as possible, running with that 1.0 lambda or, or higher lambda if I can. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that wastegate um, back so it can generate this, you know, up to 43 psi. And then on the next flight, I'm just going to be mindful so um, of where my power is. So like uh, this is the first flight, this is where I kept the power in, um, full power there until here where I dropped it down to, to 80 milligrams. And you'll see then, as soon as I drop it down, the boost starts dropping off here. And when the boost starts dropping off, even though it takes a while for that one to come in there, the temperature, uh, you know, coming out of that second turbocharger is going to be reduced. And even though you can't see it here because it's sort of, you know, past the limit of that sensor. If I fly my next profile, uh, the next flight, where I basically take full power um, till I get off the ground, and then, you know, once I've got maybe 100 feet of altitude, pull the power back to say, you know, um, instead of 80 milligrams here, maybe 70 milligrams, maybe down like here would be 70 milligrams. At that point, um, the boost is going to be back to 39 anyway. The lambda will be better. See, the lambda is 1.1 down here. So um, I'm actually going to be running lean, which will be running cooler. Um, and so those temps should start to come down if I just leave it there for long enough. And I've bought myself enough time now with the, uh, the coolant temps with that, you know, those new tanks, that as long as I keep the, this temperature of that intercooler down a little bit, then potentially everything could stabilize. So I'll just cruise climb, you know, with a 71 or with a, you know, 70 milligrams of fuel, which is basically about a 75% throttle. If I cruise climb with that uh, up to pattern altitude, that should be my best profile initially. And of course, if I can, if I've got way less drag now because those wheel wells are covered up, and also that the, uh, with the forward CG, I'll have a, a lower alpha on the ship, so less drag on that main wing. I uh, should be able to climb actually better um, with the nose down and faster. And so with all the other improvements I've made um, with you know, closing out the inlet scoop there, to uh, uh, you know, force all the air to go through the intercool and the radiator rather than having it sort of go over. And then also to the improvement of the air, the fresh air running directly into the engine instead of it sucking the warm air from above the engine. Um, all these improvements should help and basically I should be able to uh, get the aircraft you know, up to pattern altitude and even by the time I get there, the temperatures should be uh, under control and then I can level out there and everything should, should stabilize. I can pull the power back to probably, you know, 50% throttle, uh, which would be, you know, 45 milligrams of fuel around about here somewhere. And at that point there, everything should start to cool down. 
So uh, that's kind of the gist of it. So really what the summary is there is I'm going to uh, hook back up that, um, that wastegate um, controller there and uh, have it so it allows me to get to that 43 PSI again on that uh, second turbo and I'll just moderate the power myself. So um, then the other thing I'm going to do too is I'm going to start working in CAD to see about how I could fit a radiator in the nose there. So if for some reason all this still doesn't work and I still can't just sort of, you know, um, get the temperatures under control, I can't really move that intercooler right now. It's just too difficult, but I, it would be fairly straightforward to put a radiator in the front there where those tanks are now, just basically take out one of the tanks or both of the tanks and put a radiator in there and have that working sort of as, as a secondary radiator that would be on all the time. And I would run it in parallel with the heater uh, loop so I wouldn't have to necessarily have the heater on in the cabin. Um, that's probably my best bet. Obviously, um, you know, putting that intercooler in front of the radiator was a bad idea. Um, I didn't think it would be... I knew it was, it was going to cost me something, but I didn't think it would be such a big, a big deal. Um, and you know, just changing it around now is is difficult. So I'm looking for the solution that doesn't take me, you know, several months of working with, you know, getting welding done and moving things around. I mean, it's just very difficult to do. So putting a, a like, I would I would have to create like a uh, an inlet. Um, scoop on the side nose similar to what the velocities have with their oil cooler and duct air into a radiator uh, in the front there and then have the outlet air go out through an opening you know right below that still in the nose so just basically create this sort of channel of air that comes in the side of the nose and then goes through the radiator and dumps out the, the lower part of the nose but you know if I can avoid doing that um, right now, just because you know it's an afterthought, um, I don't really want to do that, and I don't have all the um, facilities right now for doing a whole bunch of, of uh, composite work. So if I had to do that, would probably be doing everything out of um, aluminum sheet, having to create sort of ducting and stuff out of aluminum sheet, and then just sort of have to use a knacker scoop or something on the side. But anyway, I'm going to start working on that just in case I need it. And um, it looks like with this uh, storm that we have. Coming by here again, this uh, tropical storm Eta, um, that's going to be affecting our weather through the weekend. But then after that, looks like we're going to have uh, high pressure move in with cooler temperatures and uh, and you know probably clear skies. So Monday or Tuesday may be the next good choice there for the next flight. So I'll make sure that I get everything dialed in and ready. Anyway, I'm sorry that was really boring looking at all these uh, charts and everything like that, but I just wanted to explain what's going on. So that's my update. Thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.